What's up guys, Humphrey here, and welcome back to my channel. And we actually have a problem. So screenshots from Reddit have been cropping up everywhere this year, inspiring FOMO among tons of retail investors like you and I. Case in point, deep effing values GameStop YOLO, where he's up nearly $18 million in a single day. Or maybe even this guy who is up 18K on Snapchat in a single day. Or this trader who made 5.5K in exactly 10 minutes trading ticker symbol Hood on Robinhood, the platform. No matter where you look online or just hear from your friends, it seems like someone out there is making a ton of money swing trading or day trading on the market, but these screenshots are really dangerous. Each time you see one of these screenshots of someone making a fortune on their trade, you're probably thinking to yourself, wait, if that guy can do it, then I can too. So what do you do? You transfer 10K from your bank account to your trading app and you start trying the same thing. The only difference is, is that you lose money and case in point, this guy who's actually basically down double digit percentages on every single position in his stock trading portfolio. I've actually been in the exact same spot this year and it's definitely a tough pill to swallow. Not 50K down, but I'm actually just having FOMO. <laughs> if I was 50K down, that'd be pretty bad. But today I'm gonna show you exactly why day trading won't make you rich. We'll go through the surprising research papers that actually show that 80 to 97% of people lose money day trading, the disadvantages of taxes when it comes to day trading, and also what you can actually do instead to make money in the stock market. Now, before we start, I wanted to shout out two commenters this week. So Kcarch25 Unknown and Michelle T. Both of these $20 are for you. And I'm gonna put these $20 in the sub jar back over here. And as a reminder, guys, I think we're at $200 after these $40 go into the jar. But once I hit $1,000 in this jar, you guys get to choose what I invest in, which is actually pretty scary. So what prompted me to make this video was this article titled, Attention Robinhood Users, Most Day Traders Lose Money. Now this was published in November and it states that most day traders lose money. And within this article, we actually have a few studies that have basically proven this point many times over and over. The first research paper cited is actually this one. It's called Day Trading for a Living. And the study ran an analysis in which they analyzed the profits net of transaction costs of 1,551 individuals over a 300 day span in Brazil. They then used regression analyses to basically figure out how profitable these day traders were. Now in it, they concluded that quote, considering the performance net of exchange and brokerage fees, we find that 97% of all investors who persisted for more than 300 days lost money. So 97% lost money and of the remaining 3%, only 1.1% earned more than the Brazilian minimum wage and only 0.5% earned more than the initial salary of a bank teller, all with great risk. In another study done by academics, including Berkeley PhDs, they analyzed the trading behavior from 1992 to 2006 in the Taiwan markets. Now the Taiwan market has very similar characteristics of the US market, and this was done with 14 years of data. And this is what they found. Consistent with prior work on the performance of individual investors, the vast majority of day traders lose money. In an average year, 360,000 individual investors day trade, but only about 15% of this population is able to profit after a reasonable accounting for trading costs. So with their study, it seems that roughly 85% of traders did not profit. Now they did, however, note that the day traders that do trade a lot and often have a better chance of beating the market. And this kind of makes sense because the more experienced traders will have sunk more time into day trading and thus gotten better. So the paper continues to read, overall, the results indicate that heavy traders with past success and experience who are willing to short sell and concentrate in a few stocks have the greatest probability of turning a profit. So if you are looking to day trade, you could take this quote as a comfortable point of view or perhaps a reinforcement of what you actually wanna do. But the thing is, is that making money doing it versus actually beating the market are two separate things. You could make money day trading, sure. But if relative to the market, you're actually down, then technically you're really not doing yourself any favors. In an older study analyzing the trading patterns of day traders in the 90s, they note that of the 66,000 households with accounts at a large discount broker during 1991 to 1996, those that trade the most earn an annual return of 11.4% while the market returns 17.9%. So these day traders were losing about 6% to the market. Now this is funny because if you were a part of this study and you were a day trader, you could say, oh man, I'm up 11.4% this year. And you might've heard this from all your friends this year. Like, oh man, I'm up 12%, I'm up 15, I'm up 50% but relative to the market, you're actually down. So that's what's interesting about this. It's always a best practice to measure your performance relative to the market because if you aren't beating the market, there's really no point in putting all this effort into day trading. Okay, so in the most recent research paper that was published, 
it was actually on the topic of Robinhood. Now in this paper, it finds that Robinhood users suck at picking stocks. One of the reasons being that the simplicity of the app, while it is powerful for getting the new investor into stocks, provides fewer indicators than other stock brokerages. In this paper, they quote, the simplification of information on the Robinhood app is likely to provide cognitive ease to investors leading them to rely more on their intuition and less on critical thinking. That means that the average day trader on Robinhood might make more intuitive or emotional-based trading decisions that go along with a herd. AMC, anybody? The paper calls this attention-driven buying, and we pretty much see this evidence on Reddit all the time. The paper goes on to say, heightened attention-driven buying leads to more concentrated trading by Robinhood users than other retail investors and contributes to buy sci herding events that are usually followed by negative returns. The paper's basically evidence that if you are a Robinhood investor, such as myself even, you absolutely cannot fall victim to meme trading or herd mentality trading. Buying index funds on Robinhood is probably okay, but the nature of the app and the simplicity of the app can be a double-edged sword, so you just really need to be careful when it comes to buying short-term positions. All right, so now let's talk about some of the tax considerations of day trading. Now, this was actually pointed out to me by another YouTuber named Alex Hermazi, which he's got really great content, so shout out to him. But one of the main reasons it's so damn hard to profit as a day trader is due to taxes. Day trading and swing trading naturally will be taxed at short-term capital gains rates, so that means you're paying ordinary tax rates on your trades. Ordinary income rates vary, but for most people, it's between 22 and 37%, depending on your tax bracket. Long-term capital gains rates, on the other hand, are typically 0% or 15% for most people, as long as you earn under $440,000 per year. So if you hold stocks for longer than a year, you actually qualify for long-term rates, and this tax treatment of long-term versus short term means that day trading is actually at a huge disadvantage. And let me show you the math. Let's say you have $1,000 invested in both scenarios, day trading and passive investing. Let's just say you performed really well in both cases. In both scenarios, you make $1,000. So with passive investing, you now have $2,000 pre-tax. And with day trading, you have $2,000 pre-tax as well. However, when it comes to after-tax totals, your total with day trading is $1,700 in that scenario, assuming your tax rate is around 30% for short-term gains. In the passive investing scenario, assuming your tax rate is 15% for long-term gains, your $2,000 total will now be $1,850. So in both scenarios, you actually gained 100% on your investment but in the day trading scenario, you're already down $150 to someone who's long-term investing. So to actually make day trading or swing trading worth it, do you know how much you would need to make in order to just break even with a passive investor? You would need to make roughly $2,220 pre-tax to make that same $1,850 post-tax as the passive investor does. That just means you need to outperform the market that much harder to even break even with someone who's just indexing for the long term. Now, this is one thing that people just don't seem to understand. How much harder it becomes to make that same amount passive investing. And not to mention that if you are day trading, you're paying a lot in fees through every transaction you make. Not only are you working harder for the same amount, you're paying more for it. Meanwhile, the passive investor is making one transaction, putting up their feet. Let's try to put up our feet right here and relaxing on whatever yacht or movie theater that they want to. Now, one thing you can do is to day trade in a Roth IRA because then you won't be taxed on the gains. So if you wanted to day trade this way, you could, but again, the evidence suggests that you would be losing money and in a retirement account, your goal is to not lose money. So I probably wouldn't do this either. Okay, so that's a lot of evidence against day trading. So you're probably wondering what will make me rich? Let's talk about index funds and ETFs and why I think they're better. Number one, low fees. So ETFs and index funds are known for their low fees. Vanguard for example, was started as a not-for-profit organization and literally offers you low expense ratio funds and ETFs because there aren't fund managers requiring a hefty salary. For example, VTSAX or VTI, the ETF version, has an expense ratio of 0.03%. So for every 10K you have invested in say VTI, you pay $3 per year in fees, which is crazy low. And having these low fees means that net of fees, you'll have even an easier time doing better than a day trader. With day trading or swing trading, you're literally placing hundreds of trades over the course of a year and each transaction adds up in fees over time. But Humphrey, aren't my trades free on Robinhood or Schwab or whatever brokerage I use? No, they aren't free. Most brokerages these days make their money with what's called PFOF, 
PFOF, or payment for order flow. In exchange for free trades, they essentially are routing your trades to hedge funds and other market makers to get a first look at your trade. The end result being that sometimes you will not get the best possible price for your trade. I mean, the price will be pretty close, but you're gonna pay fractions of a penny or a few cents difference for every share traded. Now those fees can add up over a long period of time and over many trades. Now with an index fund or an ETF, you're not really buying them that often. You might just buy them once or twice a year and you kind of just chill back and don't pay that much in fees. The second reason is broad diversification. So as Warren Buffett says, diversification is a hedge against ignorance. If you're diversified enough, you're not flirting with disaster. But if you're a day trader consistently only trading a few stocks or companies or industries, you could be too concentrated and really wealthy people understand that preservation of capital is actually one of the most important things when it comes to investing. So diversification makes things easier and safer when it comes to preserving that capital. And with day trading, you're flirting with disaster. The third reason why I like ETF and index funds is that it's passive and you don't really have to do anything. You'll basically match or beat the market over a long period of time. Now, I have some videos on index funds that you can check out below in the description. And also let me know if you want me to make a video on how to pick an index fund. For most people though, the total stock market index fund VTSAX is a great place to start and you don't really need more than just one index fund in your portfolio. There is one downside to index funds though, in my opinion, and that's they're boring. But if you ask me if all you really care about is making money consistently over a long period of time up and to the right, then indexing is probably the way to go. Now with this video being published, will people still go out and day trade? Absolutely. But I made this video to show you, hopefully, that when you are day trading, the deck is seriously stacked against you and you literally need to be in the top one to 3% of day traders to make a successful living. Not only that, you're competing against the professionals of the world who have literally made it their job and their life to be good day traders. So it's gonna be really competitive and really tough. All right, guys, thanks for listening. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel and tick the notification bell so that you can get notified whenever I drop a video. I have some affiliate links for free stocks in the description below, but I would just get the free stocks and invest in index funds if I were you guys. Lastly, thanks to all my Patreon supporters. I appreciate you guys being here. I will hopefully see you guys in the next one, which will be in a few days here. All right, peace.